Hello truth seekers and welcome back to our channel where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. It's your favorite neighborhood critic coming at you with some piping hot royalty that's about to boil over. Grab your crumpets and settle in because this drama is more explosive than a fancy corgi's flatulence after too many royal feasts. But before we delve into further discussion, if you haven't subscribed, I mean, come on guys, what are you waiting for? Hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell ASAP. So now, unless you've been living under a rock or maybe in one of those drafty little old castles, you've probably heard the latest scandal rocking Buckingham Palace. That's right, folks, the Battle of the Royal Bros. And things are getting uglier than a portrait of Henry VIII after a three-day bender. Picture this. On one side, we've got King Charles, all proper and kingly, trying to keep the monarchy ship afloat. And on the other, none other than Prince Andrew, the royal family's problem child, throwing a tantrum that would make even the brattiest toddler say, dude, chill out. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had my fair share of family squabbles. Maybe your sister stole your favorite sweater or your cousin ate the last slice of pizza, but this, this is next level family feud, people. So, what's got Andrew's knickers in such a twist? Well, it seems like big bro Charles is playing hardball. Word on the street, and by street I mean those fancy cobblestone pads around Windsor, is that the king is trying to give Andrew the royal boot from his cushy digs at Royal Lodge. But hold on to your fascinators, folks, because that's not even the juiciest part. Apparently, Charles has decided to pull the plug on Andrew's security detail. That's right, no more fancy pants bodyguards for the prince formerly known as His Royal Highness. Now, I don't know about you, but if my sibling tried to kick me out of my sweet pad and take away my protection, I'd be pretty cheesed off too. But Andrew, oh boy, he's not just mad, he's gone full on you'll rue the day villain mode. According to the palace grapevine, which let's be real is probably just some gossipy gardeners, Andrew's been stomping around shaking his fists and yelling, you'll pay for this move. Like seriously, who does he think he is, a Bond villain? But here's the thing, my royal watching friends, as much as we might giggle at Andrew's dramatics, the situation is messier than a toddler eating spaghetti in a white onesie. See, our boy Duncan Lacombe, former royal editor and all-around smart cookie, made a pretty good point on Good Morning Britain. He reminded us that, like it or not, Andrew was born a prince, and being a prince isn't exactly like working at the local chip shop. You can't just quit when things get tough. Now I know what you're thinking, but what about Harry and Meghan? They don't get protection. And you're right, my savvy viewers, but here's the kicker. Andrew's security isn't coming out of our hard-earned tax pounds. Nope, it's all coming from Charles's royal piggy bank. But let's get real for a second. Andrew might be about as popular as a fox in a hen house right now, but he's still a target. And as much as we all might roll our eyes at his antics, nobody wants to see anything bad happen to this guy. I mean, can you imagine the headlines if Charles pulled the security and something went down? It'd be like that time I tried to cut my own hair during lockdown. A complete and utter disaster. Now, I'm not saying Andrew's an angel. Far from it. The dude's got more baggage than he throw during a holiday rush. But this whole situation, it's stickier than a toffee pudding left out in the sun. On one hand, you've got Charles trying to streamline the monarchy. Makes sense, right? In these trying times, people don't want to see a bunch of royals swanning about their fancy houses while the rest of us are pinching pennies to pay the electric bill. But on the other hand, you've got Andrew who's basically saying, hey, I didn't ask to be born into this gig. And as much as we might side eye him, he's got a point. It's not like he can go down to the job center and put former prince on his CV, is it? The whole thing reminds me of that time my cousin, Derek tried to move back in with his parents after university. Sure, he was a bit of a layabout, but kicking him to the curb seemed a bit harsh. Though, in Derek's case, it actually worked out. Last I heard, he's got a thriving business selling artisanal beard oils. Go figure. But back to our royal rumble. The question on everyone's lips is what's Andrew's next move? Is he really trying to drop a massive bombshell on the firm? And if he does, will it be as explosive as we're all hoping or more of a damp squib? Personally, I'm betting it's going to be less earth-shattering revelation and more embarrassing family photos from the 80s. You know, the kind with bad perms and even worse fashion choices? Though let's be honest, we'd all still love to see those. But jokes aside, folks, this is a pretty serious situation. We're watching a family fall apart in real time, and it's not just any family. It's the one that's supposed to represent our nation. It's like watching your parents fight at Christmas dinner, but on a global scale. And let's not forget, there are real consequences here. If Andrew really does decide to go nuclear and spill all the royal tea, it could do some serious damage to the monarchy. We're talking Will and Kate caught using TikTok filters, level of scandal. 
But here's the thing that really has me scratching my head. What exactly does Andrew think he's going to achieve here? Does he really believe that throwing a public tantrum is going to make Charles change his mind? Because let me tell you, based on my experience with stubborn older siblings, that's about as likely as me winning the London Marathon while wearing flip-flops. And let's be real, threats rarely work out well for anyone. It's like when I told my neighbor I'd release embarrassing photos of his karaoke night if he didn't stop mowing his lawn at 7 a.m. on Sundays. Spoiler alert, I'm now deaf in one ear, and the whole street has seen me belting out I will survive in my bathrobe. But you know what, as much as we're all enjoying this royal soap opera, there's a part of me that feels a bit, well, sad about the whole thing. I mean, these are two brothers who grew up together, shared the same parents, probably had pillow fights in those fancy palace bedrooms, and now they're at each other's throats like two seagulls fighting over a chip. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? If even the royals, with all their wealth and privilege, can't keep it together, what hope is there for the rest of us? Are we all just one family disagreement away from threatening to expose each other's dirty laundry? But then again, maybe that's what makes this whole situation so captivating. It's like looking into a really fancy, really expensive mirror. Sure, the reflection might be wearing a crown and living in a palace, but underneath all that pomp and circumstance, they're just as messy and complicated as the rest of us. So what's the takeaway from all this royal ruckus? Well, for one, it's a reminder that money can't buy happiness or family harmony. It's also a pretty good argument for sorting out your differences in private, rather than airing your dirty laundry for the whole world to see. Though let's be honest, if they did that, what would we gossip about over tea? But most importantly, I think it's a wake-up call for all of us. Next time you're about to start a family feud over who ate the last biscuit, maybe take a step back and ask yourself, do I really want to end up like Chuck and Andy? As for what's going to happen next in this Royal Rumble, well, your guess is as good as mine, folks. Will Andrew spill the tea? Will Charles cave in? Or will the Queen Consort Camilla swoop in like a regal peacemaker and sort this mess out? One thing's for sure, I'll be here ready to break it all down for you with my usual wit and charm. And by wit and charm, I made bad puns and questionable analogies. So keep your eyes peeled and your ears open, my fellow royal watchers. This drama is far from over, and I have a feeling it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's like my gran always used to say, royal scandals are like buses, there's always another one just around the corner. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.